Okay, this is Michael Saltzman from Blue Sky Bio. I would like to welcome everybody who's joining us for today's webinar presentation and everybody who's been joining us for the past presentations as well. This is actually the second presentation of today. We had a presentation earlier, a webinar training session earlier given by attorney Helen Blach on the topic of employment law. That could be viewed along with all of our other webinar recorded sessions on blueskyplan.com forward slash webinar 2020. That is also the URL to check for upcoming webinar sessions. The list is dynamic and we are adding additional sessions as we go. We have some days with one presentation and we have days with two presentations as well. You can also stay up to date via the Blue Sky Bio user group and via the viral dental education user group. So check out those groups regarding upcoming webinar presentations and regarding the recordings. They could be accessed from there as well. As usual, we'll be sending out the CE credit for the presentation within two weeks via email. So check your inboxes and please be patient. And if you have questions during the presentation, then go ahead and enter them into the question and answer box. Not the chat box, but rather the question and answer box. And they'll be addressed during the webinar presentation. To, uh, the current presentation is being given by Dr. Russell Schaefer. He's extremely active on the Blue Sky Bio user group, posts regularly, regularly responds to other, and he, and he really stands out amongst those who share his knowledge and expertise. He's gener generous with his time and he teaches and he helps others. He was telling me prior to this presentation how he's using this time to learn about new printing technologies and continue to improve the way to fabricate uh, dentures in-house. And that's really what we're trying to accomplish with the webinar series is to enable everybody to go back to work when they go back to work, hopefully soon, uh, stronger with more knowledge and being able to continue to raise the level of patient care. So I'd like to introduce uh, Dr. Schaefer. He's gonna be teaching us on how to build dentures faster and cheaper without compromise on quality. Russell? Sounds good, thank you so much, Mike. I really do appreciate it. Let's see here, share my screen now. Let's see here. Share screen. Share. Is that working right now, Mike? Yep, that's great. I can see your, I can see, I can see your screen. Perfect. Um, so welcome, everybody. As uh, Michael said, my name is Dr. Russell Schaefer. I'm a dentist out of New Orleans, Louisiana. And like everybody else across the world right now, I'm just kind of stuck in my office, stuck at home, doing nothing. And um, a few weeks back, I was asked to make a presentation on how I make dentures. And I thought in the next hour or so, I want to go over um, what I use to make dentures, as well as my process for actually making the dentures in Blue Sky Plan. I'm not actually going to go over me putting together a denture for you by hand, mostly because um, I don't have a video camera on me right now. But I think that I, I can answer most people's questions that I get on a regular basis. The title of my presentation is called Making Quality PPO Dentures In-House. Um, one of my biggest goals here for my whole um, Part of this is to make a good $600 PPO denture efficiently. I like $600 because I feel that's kind of a good bottom number for, you know, what's some of the worst paying PPOs. I know so many dentists don't want to do dentures because the lab bill might be $340 for a decently made denture and you just can't make a profit off of that if you're doing $600 dentures for a PPO. Um, I think through this method right here, you can get a denture made for literally about 20, 30, 40 bucks or so. And also with that, that, without that much time, honestly. And that's been kind of the game plan for this. Um, today, what I'm gonna show you is pretty much what I do to make dentures, you know, what materials I use, what scanner I use, and what printers do I use. And I got a couple cases that I've kind of worked through on Blue Sky Plan. I've presented them beforehand on the Blue Sky Bio um, Facebook page but I thought it'd be kind of nice just to go through them again as I got a lot of pictures for them and people are somewhat familiar with them as well.
you know, this is probably two actually this morning. And hopefully uh, you can kind of see it's a little bit dirty right now, but that's just because we keep on taking it on, taking it off. I love this thing because you can use print a whole bunch of stuff on it. You know, I can use almost any material that I want. And I also like, because this thing's hard to break. It took me about a good six to nine months to actually break this thing the first time. Um, and after it broke, it was really just the little base that broke the um, resin holder that broke, and that's pretty easy to replace. Um, my next one is my desktop scanner, my Shining 3D. I love this thing because it does a pretty good job scanning everything I need, and I think it's $5,000-ish. Um, I like it because it's pretty darn accurate. You know, I've not had any problems with fit after using this. Also, I like it because it's fairly intuitive to use. Um, you know, I like things that are easy to use and don't break easily either. And they're also fairly cheap. And also I find that the biggest thing, because a lot of people feel I was trying to scan impressions of dentures, and I just don't find that to be very useful. I would rather scan stone. Stone is just so much more forgiving than trying to use an impression, mostly just because you can really get around all the angles of it, but also because when you scan stone, you don't have to worry about it um, moving on you if any compression happens at all. And I think the shining is really nice too because it tr scans triple trays. You know, um, so many dentists for the routine crown and bridge doing one unit just take a triple tray, and this thing can scan a triple tray for you and give you some really darn good um, crowns back from the lab. You know, materials, I've only ever used Nextnet materials. I've kind of bought into the system because I have their Nextnet 5100 machine, and that only takes Nextnet materials, um, but I like them, they work really well. Um, I've heard good things about other materials. I've used some other ones as well when I was doing some work with Evolved Industry, Evolved Dental Lab with uh, uh, Josh Jackson. You know, I use Nextent Crown and Bridge MFH for the white stuff for teeth. And for that, I use N1. I know some people like to use the bleach shade. I find the bleach shade is just too light and I've got to do too much work to it. n one somewhere between A1 and A2, and it works well for the all my cases actually, I've yet to have anybody say, oh, this is too yellow or this is too white. It's just kind of a good go-to color for them. I use the Nextent Ditcher Base as well. Um, Nextent recently just came out with the 3D Plus and that's supposed to be a stronger one and it comes in more colors. Currently the only color they have, I believe is light pink. I've used it for a couple of cases. Um, I like it, is it stronger? It feels like it's stronger. Is it needed to be stronger? Eh, I don't quite know. I don't get patients breaking a lot of my dentures in general. Um, the next thing I get asked all the time is what's my favorite soft reline? I love this Henry Schein soft reline, soft line chair side reline kit. I love it. It, it bonds pretty well to the next dent crown and bridge MFH. Um, the biggest problem with making healing dentures or temporary dentures or media dentures has always been relining these things. Um, mostly because nothing seems to bond really well to it. Well, this stuff kind of bonds well, and I use it for that reason. I like it because it's cheap also. Um, I'm a huge fan of a cheap breed line material so that if a patient comes back in after having a whole bunch of extractions done, then all we need to do is just put a reed line in there. Like I'm charging for it. It's just a one-time cost to my office. It solves a lot of problems. I also like it too because if it's cheap and it doesn't turn out right, I just rip it out and just do it again. And the next one I want to talk about is Lab Brews. This one actually is from uh, my friend August, Bill Vera. And I like these ones I get from Amazon because they cut through the MFH really nicely. Uh, Nextnet Crown and Bridge MFH is a really difficult material to cut through. And you will destroy your um, dental burrs on them. But these ceramic burrs just are fantastic and they're cheap. $15 on Amazon and you get all of those burrs. Now the ones I primarily use are pretty much the uh, top one, that green and the red and the blue. And those will last you for a couple of months and then when you're done with them, just throw them away. And then I like them too, because they fit lab hand pieces nicely. Um, isopropyl alcohol, keep a huge stock of this stuff around. 91% um, is what I use. You can use 99% if you want to reuse it. However, I just use 91% wash off my stuff. Uh, Baron Grutter has a really great way of doing it as a much cleaner system than I do. So I would refer you to him if you want to see the best ways of cleaning off um, prints. But I buy this stuff by the case and I buy it whenever I can. I was actually pretty fortunate that I had this stuff on Amazon auto ship 
uh, shipped me a dozen bottles a month for like five months. And I right now have about mm, 60 bottles around and you can't find 91% isopropyl alcohol anywhere just because of the coronavirus. Um, these are my two other printers I use. The one on the left is called an R-Pod made by Arfona. I like this one, it's an FDM printer or um, more like a hot glue gun sort of printer. I can print all Valplast parcels off that. And recently they just got approved for doing um, PMMA materials with the idea being you could print out a red PMMA base and at the same time print in their white teeth with PMMA as well. I'm pretty excited about that. Um, and this one we call Little Bow Wow. On the right, we have um, my Nextnet 5100, also we call it Biggie. Um, I like the Nextnet 5100, prints things really quick and prints them really clean. The only problem is you are tied to using Nextnet materials. Um, it, I believe it's sold by Avident or Global Dental Sciences. They take good care of me. Um, but the biggest thing with the Nexus 5100 over the moon rate is that it's much more fragile. I tore that little um, membrane a handful of times and that was not a, that was easy to do and it was an expensive mistake as well. So anyway, so the first case that I wanna go through here, um, this is one that I showed a few months back in Christmas time. Um, I believe Blue Sky Bio put on an email at Christmas Dentures. And um, it's just a case I kind of want to go through because I think some people have seen it beforehand. This patient had their teeth taken on October 2019 at the dental school. Patient um, wanted to wait six months, but you know, he kind of got depressed about it. He really wants some teeth back soon. And um, my friend, uh, the soon to be Dr. Lily Nguyen is the one who did all the clinical treatment. And her supervising faculty was Dr. Dupree. Um, I apologize, I didn't catch Dr. Dupree's first name. I forgot it off the top of my head. But um, so all this treatment was done at the dental school, more or less. Um, I like it just because, you know, I also like working with her for dental school because she takes amazing impressions. Everything looks really pretty. And you can kind of see this is what he looked like um, two months after of healing. You can still see those little like bumps that you would normally see after healing up for a few months. And we made him three sets of dentures. I mostly did this case and with Lily, uh, documenting everything just because I wanted to kind of go through the whole process of making each type of denture. So let's go with my personal favorite one, printed teeth and printed base. You know, right here, you can see that we put it in his mouth and you can see an anterior open bite. Well, this is a mistake on my end. We had too much material on the occlusal surface. And you can kind of see when I printed this thing off of my next 5100, how I have it printing so that the occlusal is being printed onto and that's where the supports are and the intaglio is pretty much the end of it. And I usually, I used to do this method all the time, mostly because it made everything sitting really easy. You could just easily just set things in the mouth, sorry, set these on the base and cure them in place. Now I no longer do that. Um, I try to put more from the lingual of the teeth, that way it's easy to clean the supports off. It does end up using more material. It does make it a little bit harder to set, but on the other hand, it does also make things just drop right on in, you know? We print out the base and red material and extent, uh, next dent, um, denture base, print out the teeth and the white material, uh, crown and next dent, crown and bridge, MFH shade N1. And um, we clean it up with some IPA alcohol, you know, just using um, kind of that with a little shaker, just to kind of really get all the excess resin off there. We set the teeth in there, set the white and the red, and then you cure it into place. And then afterwards you just polish it up um, when you're polishing, I like to use the blue denture polishing stone that we always use. And then I use the green one afterwards. I don't use the yellow one. I find that the yellow one really does embed into the denture and it's a pain in the butt to get out afterwards. But um, to get that final gloss on it, um, Dr. Matthew Stanbridge showed a cool video of it where he started just painting next dent denture base all over the areas you want to really polish it nicely. Well, you just take a, and I started finding that it works really well. Just take a little bit of stuff, paint it on there, a little bit of that next dent, a, bit, a denture base, paint it on there, cure it, clean it off, and it makes a really nice, glassy, smooth finish on it. Um, and you can see right here, this is what it looks like um, from the front. You can see on the top of it, of the denture, you see those like little like lines right there. That's where I cured it in my curing oven. And what happened was you can kind of see that little bit of excess resin just uh, sloughed off right there. and create a little spot right there. You know, this is the monolithic set. Um, these are easy to make. I actually like monolithics a lot, especially for my immediate dentures. Typically what I do in my office 
is I'll end up charging a patient mm, about $600 or $700, just depending on the case. And what I'll do is I'll make them an all white set first, take out the teeth, make them a white set. And then about a month later on, I'll come back and make a printed base with printed teeth on it. And that seems to solve just a lot of my fit problems. But I like these monolithic sets because they're just easy to make. Um, they don't look very pretty per se. And what I find is that a lot of patients say, oh, why does it look so ugly? But generally the teeth are in pretty bad shape beforehand. So anything looks better than nothing. Um, I know some people like to place red gingiva. I don't place it. I find it to be, takes too long. Um, it does make it look better, but it does add a lot to the cost. The red gingiva materials are not cheap. Um, if you are gonna place it, I recommend only placing it where the lip shows. I don't recommend placing on the linguals or the areas that don't show just because it has more time, it adds more thickness to it. And it's just not very fun in my hands at least. If you are gonna do it though, wait a week. Um, nothing's worse in my opinion than doing all this beautiful lab composite work. And then you put them in the patient's mouth, patient says, that feels too thick and you gotta grind it away. That is annoying. That's kind of why I stopped doing it just cause I can just literally see the money getting ground out when I'm cutting this denture back. So I say wait a week if you can. Um, and you can kind of see from the top right here, this is what the occlusal of the lower denture looks like. It didn't really print out that pretty. At this point I was having, I didn't thoroughly clean my next dent 5100. And this is the one of the top axillary denture. You can see that nasty little um, gash right there. You know, the nice thing with this material though is it plays a lot like composite. So just to fix that, just put some bond agent in it, cure it, and then throw some composite of your choice in there and cure it as well. Um, but when we kind of, when I deep dived into this, it was um, on an error on my end where I hadn't really cleaned my printer well enough and I'd really spend about an extra half an hour, hour just cleaning up some of the pieces of glass. So, but that's the model fix set right there. I love these things, you know. Next up is the uh, printed base with denture teeth. These are typically the hardest to make simply just because there's more steps to them. Um, but this is also the one the patient liked the best. And of the three, I completely agree with them. This one definitely looks the best of all of them. Yeah, the, the midline's off, but on the other hand, he doesn't have an anterior open bite um, and the gums look pretty to him. So the biggest thing with these ones though, is you gotta print out um, more stuff. You print out a denture coping, and a denture fin. The denture coping is used to adjust the teeth and that's the image on the right. The denture fin is what the teeth are set into, that's the one on the left. Now the one on the right there is, they're both ones of the maxillary arch. The biggest difference here though, is that I try not to waste a lot of material. So I'll go in there and pretty much just cut off the palate um, and mesh mixer, and then um, we use that. But what you do is you cut the teeth out on the coping, you set the teeth in the fin, and then cure it together. And here's a kind of an image of what it looks like from the intaglio side of the denture coping. You know, anything that kind of comes through the uh, coping, you cut back. I actually find it's a little better to be a little more aggressive with these ones. You really want to cut back more than you think you should. I probably go about half a millimeter to a millimeter beyond. Um, all my problems with setting denture teeth have always been me being too much of a uh, wuss or too much of a periodontist with placing these, um, with cutting back these teeth. So, and we set the teeth in the fin like you can see right here. And from here, you cure it in place. Um, usually to cure it, what I'll do is I'll put a little more of the base material inside the sockets themselves and set the teeth in there. And I'll individually cure them with my Velo light and then throw them in my oven for about half an hour or so. So, you know, and the biggest thing I see issues with though is that every now and then when I do this technique, you know, you're, you're setting everything together and the second molars aren't seating. Well, I've, kind of started not placing second molders for a lot of these ones just because it adds more complexity to these cases and patients typically don't notice. So be willing to get rid of second molders, you have to get rid of them. It's not a big deal in my opinion. So let's make this denture now. Let's make it um, the three different ways I showed you beforehand. Let's pull it up here, blue sky plan. I got all the cases over here. All right, dentures. So let's first go through soon to be Dr. Lily Nguyen's case. 
Let's see here. We're gonna pull in the upper jaw. We're gonna pull in the mountain models and we're pulling the lower jaw. So I started with this case, um, mostly because I have good images, which is awesome, but also because it kind of shows one thing that I want to show everybody else, and that's how you um, align models in Blue Sky Plan. And this is kind of a nice case for showing it. So we wait for it to import everything. You had a question that came in regarding the name of the resin. Uh, the the participant uh, missed the name of the resin. Can you? Oh, it's uh, the two I use is Nextdent Denture Base, and Nextdent has a, a Denture Base 3D Plus that's supposed to be stronger, um, and then also Nextdent Crown and Bridge CNB MFH, which I believe stands for Micro Filled Micro Filled Hybrid, um, and that one I use shade M2 in in one in. Okay, and of which of the printers that you discussed, which one do you use most uh, regularly? Uh, I probably actually end up using right now my R phone and my R pod the most simply because I make more partials than I make dentures. On the other hand, I recommend people to get the Moonray first just because it has the more options of printing surgical guides, which I think is what most, most dentists really use a printer for, but also it can print everything as well. Um, in my hands, it's the most user-friendly of all of the printers I showed. Okay. So this is the case right here. We're gonna, first of all, align the models. I love this feature in Blue Sky Plan. This solved a lot of the problems. So you take whatever model you wanna use, and in this case, we use the um, upper jaw. Click on what type of model you select. It's an edentulous model, and it's of the maxilla, and we continue to alignment. Then what I like to do is we take the, we see it from the um, occlusal view. And then you just kind of follow whatever Blue Sky Plan tells you to do. So we hold down our shift key, which gives a little um, cross. Take off the shift key, it goes back to arrow. Shift key goes to cross. Click on the right hamular notch, um, incisive the papilla, and then also the left hamular notch. And you can see right here that it's aligned itself into Blue Sky Plan. And this is just fantastic. This saves so so many of my problems from the initial ones. Hit continue, and then we, that looks pretty darn good to me. So we go to finish. Okay, so now what we have is we have my green model, which is my um, maxillary dentalist model. We have the blue model, which is the mounted bites. And then we have the yellow model, which is the mandible. So first we want to match the maxilla to the bite. So I click on model manipulation tab on the right hand, and on the model, I chose mountain model. I go down, I hit alignment to model. And in this case right here, I wanna go align it to the upper model just because that's the one I like the best, or that's the one I aligned everything to in the beginning. And you wanna align with points. So in this case, you hit okay, and it pulls up two screens, um, one with just the upper model on the left, and then the mountain model on the right. Now, what you wanna do here is you wanna get five, six, seven points that match on both models. I typically go for the imperfections in the models. I find that's the easiest to see. So for example, I can see there's a little imperfection in the cast right here. And I scroll on in with my wheel, hold down the shift key, press the button and that creates a little red dot. And then I do the exact same thing on the left side. Boom. Now let's keep on kind of going around. So going around more towards the front, um, I'm scrolling by holding down my left mouse button. I'm sorry, I'm rotating by holding down my left mouse button. And I can um, move around by holding down the wheel. So I see another little flaw right here. Perfect. Boom, boom. And then going around the other side, let's go to the back side and see what we have over there. Oh, perfect. We have a little bubble right there. This is Schmick 3. And let's get two more. We'll go right to the palette itself. So we go right from the kind of what, if you look at the impression itself, I see another little area right there. And then let's choose this bubble over here. Boom, boom. Now the big thing here is that I always find, I like to select one point at a time. 
I won't click on five points on one model and then five points on the other. I go one, one, two, two, three, three, four, four, five, five. And the reason is that way I don't get confused. Hit OK. And we see that this model has the blue and the green look like they're pretty much in the same plane right now. And now we got to take care of the yellow. So we click on the lower model by going up to the model manipulation tab and clicking on P, um, FAM P lower jaw. Now we're going to uh, we're going to align this one to the mountain model. And again, align using points. So again, looking for kind of the imperfections in it. There, there. There's another one I like. Let's go around the side here. around to the other side here. And let's see what we got on the, on the let's see here, let's grab this one too. Hit okay. And now we can see we've got some mounted models here. Now you might notice and say, well, these aren't perfectly aligned. Like I can see areas where one's showing through a little bit more. And in my opinion, that's okay. Um, even in denture labs, not everything's mounted perfectly. I mean, even though we use some really good materials, we have some really good lab techs. I myself work with um, Mr. Tim Lane from Sinus or Dental Lab, who does fantastic work. I would be willing to bet you that this is maybe off by um, 500 microns. I'm sorry, not 500 microns, like 50 microns or so. And I'm sure a lab gets about similar level of movement. And so to me, that's not a big deal. Um, but we mount our models, they look pretty good. Let's go continue to denture design. So now we get to choose the teeth. Um, I'll be going through this case two ways, one where we're using virtual teeth, the other way we're using physical teeth. Um, so first of all, I like that you, we'll go through the virtual teeth first because it's a little bit easier to work with. Um, I'm gonna choose the Mitchhurst Pontic Library. That's just one I like, I think it looks pretty. Um, and I always start it with medium sized teeth. So let's hit you know, Mitchhurst Pontic Library medium teeth, select all teeth, and hit OK. And you can see it gives us, uh, it's like number nine, um, to start moving in the right place. To set it to the denture, set it to a model, hold down shift, and click on the left mouse button. And that'll form up the arch form for you. Good, now we have all 28 teeth placed. Now, kind of going back to a classic way of setting denture teeth, is let's look at the top model first and just focus on setting teeth to the top model. So getting eight and nine in position. You wanna go over the two surfaces panel and you wanna make the mountain model and also lower model um, invisible for right now. So kind of scrolling around, let's take a look here. I can see first of all, this isn't lined perfectly straight, not a big deal. You just take this little small arrow to the side and you move it so it looks straight. Personally, I like to get midline first so we try to see where's the nasal palatine, um, which is right there, it looks like it's pretty good. I look for the uh, mid palatal suture, which is right there, so it looks pretty good too. And the frenum, and right there as well. I'm gonna move it over maybe just a hair to my right here, okay? Next I go in here, and the way I like to envision these is I try to figure out where would the teeth go in the bone. Um, this is kind of a way that Tim Lane showed me, and it seems to work pretty darn well, at least in my hands and his. So I try to imagine, you know, this tooth here, eight and nine, the roots coming out. So we go in, and that's about how I think eight and nine would come out of the arch right there. So let's set it against the lower now. Turn on the lower tooth, and I can see that it's looking okay, but maybe I've got to set it just a little bit higher here. Maybe I can go over, I'm gonna set it too low. So, the big thing when doing these though, is always make sure that you're kind of going quick. You know, you can start really getting into the minutia with these, and if you spend too long doing these, you're not gonna have fun. Because you can kind of make these quick with some dollars, so you kind of gotta move a little quick. Can I just interrupt you a second? Something just happened uh, around a minute ago to your volume. You're not audible anymore. Can you hear me now? 
it's still very 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 hazy huh yeah like you're far away like you're in a different room let's see how's this working for you now it's still not great it's okay. you were you were great until around a minute ago okay turn off my microphone turn it back on Okay, can you hear me now? No, nope. sorry. Okay. Hmm. Let's see here. Oh, now you're getting better for some reason. Okay. Is that good now? No, no, no. Is that good? Yeah, that's better. Okay. I'll just do it with one hand and I looks like I need to put the thing a little closer to my mouth. Um, thank you for joining okay. me on that. So and please interrupt me again if I've got a technical difficulty that I can't hear. So Going back to this right now, you see the teeth are looking pretty good place. I like the way the lower interiors are look like they're kind of coming off the bone. That was the biggest goal here. Um, now let's set it to the two thirds retromolar pad for the occlusal plane. And that the blue line looks like it's pretty well going through that two third retromolar pad. Now let's get them over the arches uh, for the lowers. So we're going to hide the upper arch, right click it, and hit toggle um, visibility. And let's see here. Now we're gonna go back to our dentist panel with the idea of let's move teeth around a little bit. So I'll go to show slash hide teeth chain. And this creates just a little way of moving teeth around. Um, and in these cases, I'll pretty much, I get the lock teeth by clicking on the green button. And this is then a tooth that can't be moved. So I like this because it makes nice big bodily movements of teeth without getting into the nitty gritty of going to each one of them. So let's make the lower, let's make the patient's right side or our left side match the gum, match the gingiva just a little bit more. Sorry, match the lower arch a little bit better there. So we're going to click on move opposing tooth. And we're going to kind of just grab the two closest to the red dot and you move everything as one tooth. I find this is a lot easier than trying to grab from the end. If you grab from the end, you can't really quite control where it goes nearly as well. Hit Control Z just to get back to wherever you did. But then we're going to move this thing out just a little bit to kind of expand the buccal corridor. And we're going to do the other thing on the other side too. Let's take a look. So that's looking better. Now let's let's lock the canines in place and let's move these teeth just slightly. Locking the canines by clicking on the green button and then just move these in just a hair bit. Let's take a look and see how they look by clicking high maxillary tooth chain. Um, that looks pretty good. I'm moving this side just a little bit more. So unflex maxillary tooth chain, hide the top model again, and let's just bring in just a hair a bit more. Perfect. Let's take a look at the top and see what we think here. So this is what I'm proposing we do for the top denture. And let's see here, that looks pretty good to me. Um, I'm happy with that. So let's keep on going. So next we're gonna do is we're gonna make the top venture first. I like to make the top venture first. I find it easy to do. Let's go maxilla, click on, make sure you click on the right denture, click maxilla, create denture. And it'll just pull up the top denture along with the teeth. Um, we'll hide the lower by clicking, right clicking, and clicking toggle visibility. And now we get to pretty much design our um, master cast. So I try to set my um, direction more kind of in a pal, I mean, sorry, more from the patient coming from the front, but also to minimize the blockouts, which are the brown areas here. And what I like to do is I'll go to the view I like and hit set direction, uh, set insert direction from view. I typically like to grab on the more undercut. Um, so I would generally bump this number up by clicking on it up to about half a millimeter undercut. And that just seems to be a good number for me. I like it because I'd rather have too much undercut where I can always grind back later on. And next we're gonna um, define the posterior palatal seal. So click on that button and let's kind of choose the biggest thing we're gonna knock this back here. And that looks pretty good. Now with the posterior palatal seal, you can kind of play around with the different numbers here. Generally the two things I play around with the H0, uh, which kind of just changes the um, AP of it. 
the position of it. And I'm trying to get it where you can kind of see the vibrating line right here on that macular cast. And then also I can change the thickness of it. I like the thickness of one millimeter. I find that this is kind of a happy medium for everything. Um, you can have whatever you want, but I find that the, the more thickness you have, the more short spots you have in the back. Okay, click next. Okay, Russell, the sound is still not great. I don't know if there's anything you could do from your side to improve it, but it's not coming across clear. Okay, hmm. let's see, is that better? Yeah, yeah, that is better. Okay, let me try one more thing here. How's that? Is that okay? Yeah, that's good. Oh, let's do it like that then. Um, good thing you can't see me. I look kind of silly right now. So the next part is, let's, are you still hearing me okay right now? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Next part is, let's create our contour. Now I want to create the outline of the denture itself. So select a point, select an area you want to start. I like to start around the hamular notches. Hold down shift, you can click buttons, click on the master cast where you want to put it at and make very big jumps. There's no use in making very small ones like this because you'll spend forever doing it. Trust the software, it'll take care of you. And so you just make big jumps like that, go around the frenum and when you get towards the end, you wanna make a click, hold down the left mouse key and just drag it into place right there. And I find that you can easily spend way too much time with this. So that's why I kind of like to make these big, broad strokes with it. So hit next, and the software creates a um, face for you. And this part takes a bit of time. Um, it's kind of a watch pot sort of thing, never boils. The, I mean, there are lots of questions coming in. One that just came in is, can you go back and alternate vertical dimensions after the patient tries first print on the denture? You can, but you have to take a new bite. You have to take a new bite on them, and that's pretty easy to do. Um, but you got to take a new bite, and um, then what you I, then what I've done beforehand is pretty much take the mounted models and bring them back into Blue Step Plan, and just remake the denture from that. Okay, can you speak a bit about how you acquired the data set, if it went through Mesh Mixer or another software first, if it's directly from the scanner, and in what situations do you, do you need the mounted set, and in what situations do you not need the mounted set? So the one reason I like the Shiny 3D is that it'll, if you go through their steps, and let's say you have two mounted sets, you have a mounted set of dentures, you can scan in the byte, and then scan in each master cast itself, and after that, the software will actually align everything for you. And 95% of the time that works out perfectly. So very rarely do I have to go through that first step of mounting the models again. Um, I kept it for this one just because I thought it was a kind of a good exercise. And I know it happens pretty often for people. Okay. So now we get to our first proposal for um, what, they, what the software thinks the gingiva should look like. And overall it looks pretty good. Um, I'm gonna probably wanna add a little bit in some areas in the back here. So let's do add remove, um, and let's just play with the tool size. Normally I have a pretty big tool size and pretty big tool strength for both of them. Tool size just refers to how big of an area it'll affect. Tool strength's about like how much you're adding. So I like to have a, usually I keep tool strength around 10, um, and tool size, we'll keep it right there. And we'll hold down the shift key and just add where you wanna have more gums at. So add, add, add. Now, if you're doing a monolithic denture, this isn't really too important. Um, just because everything will bond together will be one piece. If you're making it two pieces, though, you really want to have more gingiva so you can actually have some areas, like some sockets, kind of set to keep that. So, make it in there. Let's see here. Usually the second molars are where my problems come from, so I'll usually build up the second molar pretty nicely. And I'm using the mouse wheel button to pan like that. I'm just using left-click button to rotate it. Add some more right there. Scrolling out with the mouse wheel, going in and out. And that looks pretty good. Now, I'm not going to worry about the overhang right here. Um, I don't even adjust that digitally. I'll just have it print out and I'll grind it off by hand. I find that to be the most efficient way of doing it. Okay, now we hit next. And we say finalize. Now you have the option of creating the teeth, um, connecting all the teeth together to make one single SDL file. I'll do that to show you what it looks like. 
I don't usually use it, but it's another option for you. What this will do, this will make it so that the feet aren't so individual where they'll break off so easily after you print them out. Um, it's easier to set for some people. I don't find it easier to set, but some people like it more that way. So it's highlights. And now this is the part that takes the most. Um, and this is kind of where your stuff is great for to do this thing. Um, and to go back to this point right here, um, the class I teach on this, I've discovered that this can be the most frustrating part, especially if you're an older computer. You really want to have a nice computer for this. Um, otherwise, it'll just be very frustrating, especially if the computer crashes halfway through because you didn't have enough um, RAM or enough, a strong, strong enough processor to do it. But, um, Mike, what other questions y'all got for me while we're waiting? Yeah, sure. First of all, let's discuss it. It says tooth trim. So what is the software, what is the software doing now? And how does that help? Um, so what it's doing right now is it's, you know, I, I wish I could speak more to the specifics of it. I, this is kind of where it goes into a black box in my mind. Um, but what it's trying to do is trying to figure out, okay, what part of this tooth needs to get cut out so that you can easily set some teeth on there. Um, and I would right, it's removing the, the back side of it right now, but I can't, it's all locked up. Right, um, so we're, we're removing the intersections and between the teeth and the substructure or the model, but we're retaining a certain uh, minimal thickness of the gingiva base. Perfect. That's, I did not, I, I knew it was coming along the lines. I, I didn't know how to say it though. Okay, and you, show, you, you discussed previously the physical teeth versus the virtual teeth. Can you talk a bit about what the differences are and, and uh, what the process flows are and, and what exactly are virtual teeth versus physical teeth? So virtual teeth are um, sets that are easily modified and you can print out yourself through a blue sky plan and a printer. Um, I, like the physical, I, mean, I like the virtual teeth a lot because I can play the most with them. I can do whatever adding and subtracting I want to do through the software. Um, and I just find them easy to set overall. That being said, the biggest downside with them is that because you're printing them out of a composite-like material and the composite-like material does what composites do and they stain more easily. Um, the physical teeth sets, the ones that uh, Blue Sky Battle Plan has right now, I believe are nobiliums. Um, I don't know if there's any plans to get more of them. But the nobiliums I like a lot because they look pretty. They dentist teeth is what they are. They're processed CMMA teeth. Um, and they are more tricky to set, but they tend to look a little prettier. I find that they don't bond as well as the printed out teeth. And I suspect that it's something to do with the chemistry of how CMMA reacts to the denture based material versus how Nexgen Crown and Bridge MSH reacts to the denture based, uh, next denture based material. I don't know if that answered the question that well. Right, so the virtual teeth essentially are situations where you're going to print the teeth, and the physical teeth are situations where you're going to be inserting physical manufactured teeth. Um, there's still comments coming in regarding about your, your sound, your volume. I don't know. Okay. Uh, that's, that's better. So it goes in and out. Seems. Okay, that's strange. I guess I need to... I thought this one, this one got good reviews for Zoom, but I guess... Amazon lied to me. Okay, um, let's talk about some of the questions that are coming in here. Um, how do you adjust your VDO? Um, typically here, I won't adjust VDO at all. So if I, for some reason, had a reason to adjust VDO, I would actually pull up a D3 splint and go through a way of just mounting the models in D3 splint and changing it up for one to three millimeters. However, I generally just don't adjust VDO here. Um, I just find it to be, you know, usually I find my wax rooms to be pretty spot on with them. And if you start adjusting VDO, especially in um, Blue Sky Plan, it can get kind of hairy pretty quick. So I say just trust your, mount, trust your mounted models. That's my best recommendation for you. Okay. So we finally got our top done. Um, and to kind of show the point is that um, of what is doing is trimming. Let's see here. Let's see if we can find if we can click on a tooth that actually goes through everything. Let's see here. One second. So you can see back here the areas where the white teeth are kind of shining right through the um the model itself 
the software is pretty much trying to cut that part out of it because otherwise it won't sit in the patient's mouth. So that's how I look at that. And let's see here. So from there, let's create the bottom denture. And then we'll have some time for some more time for um, questions and answers. All right, so let's go to select denture, lower, click on mandible, create denture. It's going to ask you, do you want to plan a new denture or continue to plan the denture? You're going to want to click plan new denture. It's going to keep, it sometimes keeps up some of the old models. Right click and just toggle visibility for them until they go away. So let's do the bottom denture now. Again, select a 50 um, point, 0 0.50, set the um, insert direction. Let's see, let's do that again. I like that one the most. Hit next. We create the block up model. Now let's create the contour. And generally for these ones, um, the models look really overextended, but I'm not, I trust Lily's models quite a bit. Um, just because she does fantastic work, but also I'd rather have way too much grabbed onto because I can easily grind this off with those um, nail, uh, nail ceramic kit that I showed you from Amazon earlier. Again, kind of make big, broad um, movements. And for the last one, hold down the mouse button and connect it. So it makes all one big piece. And hit next. Second here. So, Mike, what other questions are we waiting for this to fabricate? Um, when you Oh, we just addressed this actually. When you complete your denture in blue sky, isn't there an option to have the software trim the teeth for you? I've just been printing the denture and the teeth snap right in. Um, right, so we just discussed previously how the software could trim off when you're using virtual teeth. The software does the trimming. When you're using physical teeth and the software doesn't trim, but you're able to kind of make a trim guide, um, the last step of the denture fabrication, then trim the teeth with, uh, with your burr. Exactly. Um, and now we can see we've got the lower model here. Let's add a little bit of gingiva to the front again, make sure the tool size is set um, medium. I like the strong, I like strong tool strength. Um, add a little bit right there. And you're going to notice, especially on the second molars, where I said before it gives me the most problems, everything's kind of, um, what's the report, covered up back there. I don't get too worried about that. The software will correct for that uh, when it cuts things out. Otherwise, I kind of like the way the gums look. Actually, let me add a little more right here. Otherwise, it looks really good. Hit next. And I'm not going to connect the teeth this time. This will take more time. So let's finalize. Um, and Mike, what are the questions? OK, what's the difference between making a new denture versus duplicating an existing one? So I am not a big fan of duplicating an existing denture. Um, I just, I find it in my hands, at least it takes too long to try to scan it back. I know, um, Dr. Corey Glenn loves doing it and he's quicker than I am. What I typically find is that if I just have the master cast in a bite, kind of like what I have here, that's enough for me to create a new denture for the patient. So what I do for, especially for my, um, high indentures that I send to my lab is that I will actually usually, I will scan in the um, bite rims with the uh, master cast and just save that document, save that, um, S save those STLs so that if in the future I need to make a denture really quick because they lost a denture or a dog ate it or something happens to it, um, we have a one that's a backup immediately to use. So like I said, I'm not a fan, I don't duplicate dentures per se. I would rather um, just duplicate the um, bite records 
with the uh, MasterCast. Okay, next question. Any way of fabricating a printed denture with an, intra with an intraoral scanner? So I didn't go into this. Um, I, taking intraoral scans of edentulous areas is really difficult. Um, could you do it? I'm sure you could, but for the amount of time you'd probably spend trying to scan it, um, you either need a really nice scanner. Um, like I think the prime scanner probably could do it uh, from what I keep on seeing, but I don't see too many of the doctors recommending doing intraoral scanning of the dentulous areas just because it's not very easy. In my, it's not very easy. And to me, I kind of like things that are easy. So if you really want to do it what I, with an intraoral scanner, what I would do is I'd probably do everything I'm doing here and then pour up the stone models and scan the stone models themselves. I think that'd be the quickest way of doing it personally. Okay. Do you want to continue? So let's see here. So now we can see what we get back. Um, you can see that the second molars here have been cut, uh, the areas have been cut out for it. And it doesn't look too pretty right here. And this is like I was, why I was saying earlier, I typically don't like to include second molars on it. But this kind of shows you what the software will do. Um, and next, let's go to exporting stuff out. So I think that's the next and most important thing. So let us, first of all, I like to do when I'm trying to export things out is that I will make everything pretty much invisible for right now. What we'll do is we'll go to first go to the dentures themselves by clicking these areas down here on the teeth surface panel. And I can see I get the four different dentures. So I get the upper base, lower base, and then you can see the upper denture fin because the hole's cut out and the lower denture fin. Um, if I was gonna print this as, as a printed base and printed teeth, I would first want to export these two things right here. You click on export data. And then click export. I'll and export them and let's see here. Then you want to save them to a certain file. And we'll just call these fins. Um, Export those. And next, if you wanted to do the teeth, you would you can see right here what teeth have been cut back and which ones have not been cut back. So we'll just do the bottom two first here. So I'm gonna hide all of the top teeth. File, export. And it's pretty nice that uh, Blue Sky Plan doesn't charge you for exporting teeth. So we'll call this uh, mandibular printed teeth webinar. Now let's get the maxillary teeth here. Now we gotta figure out how, now we gotta add in the extra teeth that have been kind of lost through the process. So let's go to teeth and crowns. Let's see here. First one we get the site. That's the mandibular one, the maxillary. Let's get the second premolar. Let's see here. Oh, wrong button. Hit visible here. That opens up that one. We get the lateral next. Good. Right lateral. And then. Second premolar, looks like the second, first molar as well. So when you finish fabricating a denture, the software automatically selects the denture base and the relevant teeth. If there's a reduced tooth, then it selects the reduced one. And if there isn't, then it, it, it selects the, the non-reduced tooth. So everything that's relevant to be exported is automatically selected as soon as the denture finishes fabrication. So in that situation, you could go to file export and export everything you need, um, which is automatically 
selected. Exactly. And so this case right here, now we have pretty much, so what we've created four different, or three different files. We've created one for the fins, we've created one for the maxillary teeth, and one for mandibular teeth. And if you wanted to do a um, printed, in, uh, a full, um, what's the word for it? If you want to do a monolithic denture, you need to do two, you just select all the teeth again. Select all the mandibular teeth. And then select the base, the denture base. Don't select the denture fin because if you do, it will have like a little bit of a gap between where the teeth are and where the um, gums meet. So always make sure you select the denture base itself. Denture base for the top and hit file. Export data. So you can export everything either as one file or you can do it in two different files. I'm gonna do it as one file. And you aren't charged a second um, ST, uh, second export fee for that. And then after afterwards, let's see here. We pull up Rayware, which is the software for my Moonray, and we can very easily. Let's see here. Where's that here? Here's Lily Nguyen's. And we can see that it gets exported into my printing software. I normally like to print like this. And usually I print it as two different pieces. Um, print out one for the top, one for the bottom, but that's just, this is just for this example. And that's how I make um, printed dentures with printed teeth. I mean, say a printed base with printed teeth. Now, uh, do I have more, do I still have enough time, Mike, to go through another one? Sure. Okay. Let's go through the same case and we'll go through the, um, What's it called? We'll go through making the teeth again, but with um, actual teeth, but the uh, physical teeth, not the virtual teeth. So I'm going to delete everything I just did. All right. Let's make them. Let's make my two models visible again. And now let's put some printed teeth on. Let's put some regular physical teeth on there. So I can go to little add tooth button. Click on physical teeth. For this one right here, let's stick with, we'll do the medium size for him. And you don't have an option for medium, small, medium, si large, just because they're all one set. Select all teeth, hit OK, hold down shift, click the last left mouse button and the arch form should happen. Perfect. Using the same thing as before, let's set the top teeth first. Set the midline. Get my two thirds retro molder pad. And now let's get it and go over the lower arch. Here. Can you, to, to respond to a question while you're doing this, can you, how, how are you selecting the midline? Just the anatomical features off the model? If you wanted to shift the midline, can you indicate to that on the cast and go from there? You certainly could. If, um, if uh, Lily Nguyen had wanted to, she could make a nice little notch right here, kind of like what a lab would do for itself. In this case right here, I'm looking at the frenum, the maxillary frenum right here the incisal papilla, as well as the suture line, which we see right here. And those three all coincide, or they seem to coincide, at least to me. And so therefore I feel pretty darn confident that that's where the midline should be at. Do you generally turn on the grid functionality at this point to help with alignment, or you feel like it's not really helpful? I don't like the grid function too much. I find it's too much stuff on the screen personally. I personally prefer to go more by these, um, by the lines that are shown here. 
and that's just how that's how I find it. I find the grid it looks pretty, but it's just too much stuff for me to see personally. Okay, just so you know, in you are able to change if you feel like it's too busy or too many lines in properties. You you are able to change the attributes of the grid and you know tune it to your liking. I did not know that. I learned something new today. Then I just yeah, I've I've seen it before. So let's set the bottom arc now. Again, go to show hide tooth chain. Lock the front teeth, so they're happy where they are. And let's expand it just a little bit here by grabbing the tooth closest to it. And that looks good to me. Let's lock the canines now. And we're locking some by pick, clicking in the green buttons, starting in the red. And let's just see if we can modify where the premolars and molars go. So I'll bring them in just a hair bit here and swing them out just a hair bit on the other side here. And I like the way that's all kind of shaping up right there. So next, let's make another denture here. Create denture. Now in this case, we're gonna plan new denture. Hide the bottom. Set direction from view. We'll go again to 0 0.5, 0. Create posterior palatal seal. Grab the hammer and notches. Move this to one millimeter. And I'll pull up the H0, so it's slightly up there. Hit next and create the master cast. Again, build the denture. How long would you say it takes you to plan a denture? I would say that normally I probably spend what you're seeing right now is kind of me working more in real time. So this is about how long I spend making a denture or actually designing a denture under this guy plan. And I would say that probably the, the hardest thing for most dentists when I watch them when we're doing my class is that people want to really get into the nitty gritty and move things around. And I try to tell people don't do that just because the more you try to move everything around individually as if it's um, you have an individual hand, I'm sorry, you move individual teeth, the more frustrated you'll get with the software because it won't give you the best answer. Using the software, you know, I find that I can create a really good $600 denture just by doing these steps right here. So I'm just kind of just trusting the software to give me back a good answer. Okay. Any tips on faster and, and precise teeth arrangements? Um, what do you, I guess I I'm, I'm, don't understand the question. Um, okay, how do, here's a follow-up, how do you achieve good intercuspation uh, of opposing um, natural teeth in the case of a partial denture? So, say that last, I didn't hear the last part. In the case of opposing natural teeth and in the case of a partial denture. So, um, with this software, you can make, and I've showed examples of it before, of making partial dentures with it. I've kind of gotten away with that, um, especially because it just does the dent, the parcels just aren't very comfortable with it. Um, and, but to make good intercuspal relationships, what I would say is that, um, and I do have another case that I've included and we probably won't have time to go through it, um, where I have an upper denture that's mounted, uh, sorry, an upper edentulous arch that's mounted against the lower uh, dentate arch. And mostly what I do is I try to make it so that the posteriors are just slightly out of contact with the, um, with the natural teeth and I'll have slightly heavier contact on the anterior portion of it. That seems to be a good balance for everything works. Um, and then by using the different functions of Blue Sky Plan, like I love the crown and bridge module where you can literally just add up and add two individual teeth itself and pretty much design custom crowns for any mouth. And that's why I really like using the, um, the virtual teeth more so than the actual physical teeth. 
I hope that answers the question. And if it doesn't, um, you can post, you can either direct message me on Facebook later on, or um, you know, ask a question on Blue Sky Plan and try Blue Sky Bio's Facebook page, and I'll answer it better, hopefully. So here's we're going to add some more gingiva to it. We can do front teeth here, just because we really need something to lock on there. And so it looks like the back teeth. Add a little bit more here. I find that you should always err more towards the side of having too much gingiva than not enough, just because I can always take back gingiva later on with the hand teeth. Um, and actually, this brings up another point I want to make out to everybody here. So you can see this little line back here that it looks a little bit um, concave. When you first start making these dentures, what patients are going to tell you is that there's a gap in between, uh, in between the denture. And there's actually not a gap. They're feeling this concavity right here. Right here, you can really see it nicely. Whenever you're going to polish these up, make sure to make this a nice finish line right here, almost like a knife edge. The more knife edge you can make it, the happier it'll make your patient. Because um, this, is, this is something that frustrated me when I first started making these, is that everyone said they felt open. And I could see it wasn't open, but then when I started adjusting this area back here, it turned out to be is this the right answer for it. So now we're going to create our denture. Hit finalize. Whoops. And I did something wrong here. I apologize. Let's see if I can cancel it in time. So the mistake I made here was I should have clicked on generate tooth reduction coping as well. And I'm trying to hope, hoping hitting escape will stop it before it goes to the whole, oh, and it decided to crash. So let's open back up Blue Sky Plan. While this is loading up again, do you uh, delegate these tasks to an assistant or do you do the work yourself? I do it myself, but that's just because I kind of like, I really enjoy doing it. Um, for dentists that really want to delegate out, I think you certainly could. What I would say makes the most sense is that I think it's better for the dentist to set the teeth themselves um, rather than having a, um, well, I think it's better for the dentist to set the teeth rather than having um, the assistant set the teeth just because it seems like we usually get it a little better. Let's see here now. Um, I'll let you do it. Okay. Because that one actually, that one I can do the same thing on. Let's see if I can find it here. We also have a lab pronto surface uh, service for dentists that want help either doing a digital setup um, and then they're going to fabricate it in-house or vice versa where they're going to do the digital setup but want help with the fabrication or the printing or dentists that want to outsource the entire process. So we have lab pronto, labpronto.com. It's a great service to get help you need. Or, or due to the fact if you're too busy or don't have time, you could outsource whatever part of the process you want to outsource. And I can definitely see that being useful. Um, where I find the real strength of these is to be when you're making immediate denture for somebody uh, or you need a denture back really quick. In my mind, if you, want, if you were a, a really busy PPO doctor, but you really want to do this, it would make sense to almost have the assistant scan everything in. You just approve the scan to make sure that the bite looks proper and you can send it off to lab pronto and have the assistant get everything back and literally make it just like, I guess uh, T-Bone always talks about having some all-star. I think you can also have a denture all-star, somebody who just like knows how to like lead the whole process really well. Um, Cause you are right. And I, while I've not used Lab Pronto, I've seen all the results my friends have gotten back from it. It's all been phenomenal. And so to answer an earlier question, let's go to a case where we're just setting an upper arch here. So this one is a young man I showed you before. I'll show you back again. This is what the guy came to me looking like. Um, we're doing a top denture for him, and you can see right here how he just, it doesn't look pretty at all. He's got a roller coaster arch. And to solve this, what we did was we pretty much took models on him, upper and lower alternates, and then I pretty much just put a couple of little um, tongue depressors in there to kind of open his bite up and took a bite, a blue bite from there. I scanned the models in, and then I adjusted the maxillary model by hand, and I scanned the adjusted model in. And I'll show you what we got out. So we have a dentate tray. We're going to align it. So this one we're going to use a mandibular arch. Okay. 
Now with this one, the upper arch adjusted isn't perfectly aligned to the um, to the models yet. So I'm gonna adjust, we're gonna align that one to the upper jaw. Again, kind of going by the areas where there's imperfections in the model. Let's see here, we'll go with this one right here. Mm -hmm. That right there. That right there. So there's a question that came in that seems relevant to the situation. C could you capture a scan prior to extraction to mount the models? You can, and this is pretty much what I did here as I captured the scan um, right here. And you could go in the software itself, Blue Sky Plan software and just cut these teeth out by, um, by using the software. I don't typically do that, but that's not too difficult to do. Um, and I go through it with y'all, but I'm just not good enough to do justice to the program. I've seen the stuff that uh, Dr. Baron Brutter does with them, and that all looks really impressive to me. And now we've just mounted the top model to it. So, go to continue adventure design here. And there's a question if it's a smush bite or two wax bites. Right here, this is um. No, that came in previously, but uh, I, yeah. So this isn't, a, this right here isn't really a smush bite. This is um, teeth that are separated by a, by pretty much separated using some tongue depressors. And then I took a blue bite using those teeth as the guide. So in this case right here, let me add, hold on a second. You can see my big clumps of blue bite right here on my um, bite models, on my total jaw model. And you can kind of make out where the teeth wanted to go. You can even see part of the, um, what's that called right there? Part of the tongue depressor right there sticking out. And my Shining 3D pretty much just scanned this whole piece in like that from the side. And then it scanned in the top and the bottom and it fit everything together from that. And that's where, you know, usually I'm not having to um, do that first step where I'm aligning everything back again and this because the Shining 3 does a pretty good job with it. So here's my adjusted model. Now let's set some natural teeth on this here. Now the first, some people might also ask me, why do I, why did I choose this bite? Well, it kind of looked right to me, honestly. I can kind of envision, you know, teeth coming off here. Um, this guy has a, had a lot of occlusal issues, obviously. And probably the biggest question here is where's the midline gonna be at? Um, you can see if the lower arch, the midline looks like it's about right here, whereas the upper arch is probably a good couple millimeters more towards our right. Generally, I'll usually go with whatever looks right on the maxillary arch though. So we add some teeth to it. We're gonna add the physical teeth set this time. He's a bigger guy, so let's do some bigger teeth on him. The question came back. in how you select the, the tooth size. Do you have a... Um, the way I select two sides, honestly, is mostly just trial and error. Um, if in doubt, I'll always go with the medium tooth. But as a rule of thumb, I kind of like bigger teeth. I just think that usually smaller teeth just don't look as good. I know there's a lot of opinions on that subject. But um, if I'm going to choose a tooth, I generally err to go a little bit bigger than a little bit smaller. So, but I think that's also the power of it is that you get a chance to try them both in and see what you think. It's also, if I could add a comment, once you add the teeth, and we're talking about virtual teeth, obviously, because if it's physical teeth, then there's no adjusting the size because it's corresponding to actual manufactured teeth. But once you drop the teeth in, you have a slider that you could change the size of the, all the teeth, the entire arch, to enlarge or to shrink them to, in order to create the proper fit. Oh, exactly. Yeah, that's, uh, that's kind of like where, why I like using the virtual teeth as well, just because you can play with them just so much more. Um, I can wax up my own teeth, literally, and I find that just be very nice to use. So generally I'll use printed teeth, the printed base, and or virtual teeth with the printed base, 
Um, but for this exercise, let me go through how, we, how I'd set um, actual teeth here. So in this case right here, when I look at them, these are the biggest teeth set. Let's set the front teeth first. And I'm kind of liking how they look, honestly, because it looks like it's kind of covering his whole arch right here. You can even see his um, mandibular molars are far bigger than the denture teeth themselves. Um, and so I'm, I'm liking the size of the teeth on this one here. So first and foremost, let's start setting um, teeth we want to set them at. So let's try to get a good overbite over jet. And let's bring them down just a little bit here. And let's see here. A little bit more. Now he's got like a little bit more of a flatter area in the front here. So let's try to expand it just a hair bit. There's several questions that came in regarding taking the smile line into consideration when you're setting the teeth and if you do that and how you go about doing that. So I don't actually use the smile line too often, um, especially when I'm setting my first teeth. Usually what I'm using is I'm using the bone. So I'm trying to visualize really how do I want these teeth to come out of the bone right there. And also the idea of with him especially, you know, where are those bottom teeth? because I'm really trying to reform everything for this guy's smile. And maybe it's laziness on my part, or maybe it's just that um, it seems to work well in my hands. But I find that following the anatomic markers typically gives me a pretty darn good result for my patients. And the nice thing is that, let's say I botch this, because I'm human and I do make mistakes, you know. Every now and then comes back and say, oh, we messed it up pretty badly. Well, you just make it again. It's, it isn't necessarily fun to have redos, but this is not really a, this is not a painful redo to have, you know, it's not another $300, $400 lab bill that say, okay, let's go back to the design stage. Um, let's change things around from there. And when you first start doing these, usually I'll actually do a wax of a smile try-in where I try everything in with just the virtual teeth on um, all printed monolithically. And that's a really good way of just checking everything before you actually finish fabricating. Because like I said, it's really easy to make uh, monolithic dentures. Those are quick to make. And I can turn those out relatively painlessly. So my recommendation is that when you first start doing these cases, you know, don't go right to smile finish. Start out first with just doing some try-ins like you normally do for dentures. So I like the way the front four teeth look here. And now let's start moving individual teeth. So we hit manipulate model, and we can start kind of moving teeth to close the bite, to, to make sure there's not an open bite anywhere. And let's, and to kind of access everything easier, what I find works well is make the bottom transparent. So you right click and set toggle transparency. Lock the teeth in place that you like where they are. So I like the centrals right now, and the laterals as well. On this side, I don't quite like the canine as much. I think I got it too much, too squared out. So go back to show me the tooth chain. Let me do this real quick here. And square it just a little bit. That looks better to me. So go back to manipulate models. And let's start pulling things in just a little bit, just to give a little more characterization to it. And now that person I was asking you beforehand, how do I know how far do I want to, you know, put teeth in occlusion to make sure I get good relationships, intercostal relationships? Well, this is where I can really evaluate it. So right here, I can see that my first premolar isn't occluding at all with the, the lower premolars at all. So I will literally just zoom over it and just bring it down a notch. For here. And this is all using the physical teeth, not virtual teeth. But we can see right here that I've got a little show through. And if I toggle transparency again, you can definitely see that show through right there. If these were virtual teeth, I could go into the um, crown and bridge editor and just edit away the um, 
excess uh, heat that I don't want. The second premolar is a little bit heavier, so this is when I want them. I lighten it up slightly here, a little bit more. And then the first one lost their sheath, which they usually do. And then let's go to the molar, which has a very heavy occlusion on it. And do a little bit more here. A little bit more. And just a hair bit more from there. And it's just barely out of occlusion. I'm bringing down just a little bit there. So there we go. Now, patient's right side is set. Let's go to the left side, which is a little more challenging just because of more of the roller coaster on this side. So, we like the way the canine is right now. Let's set the first molar. I'm mean, sorry, the first two molar. Now, the big thing here is that you want to make sure that these teeth aren't too close because the software is not going to give you a give you a way of reducing it interproximally. And for this one, especially on the left side, I can tell that um, if I do it the way I normally do it, I'm going to have too much space. I'm sorry, too little space to fit everything together. So I'm going to move back the second molar just a little bit. Lock that. Move back the first molar a little bit more as well. Lock that. Move back the second by. Good. And now let's move this first by cuspid to where I want it to be at. So we'll drop it down. See right here, that's a pretty heavy contact for the premolar, even though for the first premolar, even though I like having the anteriors have a little bit heavier contact on the to these printed dentures. So I'll bring it back up a little bit more. And let's do a hair bit more. And then let's pull it out just a little bit as well. Pull it out buckly, I should say. I like that spot. So lock it. Now let's do the second bicuspid. Move that to where I want it to go to. Bring it down. That's way too heavy a contact, clearly. Rotate it slightly here. Just because of um, the lack of lack of occlusal space back here, but let's see what we can get. So unlock the maxillary first molar. Do not want to do that. Toggle transparency. And now let's move this one into some sort of relationship with the lower arch. And I probably would have kept this guy in a crossbite, honestly. I think that probably would have been the easiest thing to do, just because his lower arches are so much farther buckly. And I really want to have all the forces really going over the arch on the uh, maxilla, just so we don't compromise the integrity of the denture. Let's see here. Just a little bit more from that. And we'll probably incline it just a little bit. Do that just nice. Good, just keep it right there. Now let's do the last one here. And this one right here, I probably wouldn't even include it, honestly, just because I can already see I'm not gonna have enough room for it anyway. So let's not even worry about it. So for right now, I'm gonna keep it right there, but I'm gonna ignore it when I set the teeth. So next, let's actually set the teeth. Let's actually mix the denture itself. Take the top denture, create denture, hide it right there, hide the lower arch. Let's set the direction so we get some good under, undercuts here. And define posterior palatal seal. So by the inner notches right there. it up a little bit more because I can see his vibrating line looks like it's about right here or so. Hit next. Now 
I don't quite like that. I didn't quite like that one right there. So let's try it one more time here. So the one nice thing is whenever you don't like it, just hit back and just redo it again. Good. Now let's make the outline again. And I can see right here that the second molar is like really out of the arch form. That's probably why I'm not even gonna include it. Especially because on that side, he's not even, he doesn't even have any teeth on the bottom, on the bottom um, right. There we go, connect it again, hit next. So just to respond to some questions that are coming in. So in the software, we do have the ability to import a photo and we do have the ability to import a 3D full color face scan. So those capabilities do exist in the software if you're looking for that. That's really cool. I did not know that actually. So we get our proposal back for gum. To me, it looks pretty good. And you can see there's this area right here that we don't, none of us love, but that's just the way the occlusion is. So you gotta kind of deal with what we got. And like I said, we're probably not gonna worry about the first mol the second molars that much. I'm just gonna kind of cut them back a little bit more. We might have to grind it back in our hands. That's not a big deal to me at least. Add a little bit more right here, just so we got some good grip on it. Let me bump my tool size up a little bit more. Sorry, tool sink, I apologize. And let's hit next. And then here, this time we're gonna create a tooth reduction coping. And hit finalize. And now it should create me two different um, upper dentures or three different ones. It should create me a base, a denture coping, and then a denture um, fin as well. I'll use the denture coping to actually cut back my teeth. And I'll use the denture fin to actually set the teeth into. Um, and let's take a minute to, to go through the steps. Mike, what other questions do I have? Uh, you touched, you discussed this earlier, but the question came in, what kind of resin is needed for printing and what kind of coloring are you using? Um, so for this one right here, I would be using Nextent Denture Base, or I might even use the Nextent Denture Base 3D Plus. Um, so I'm not doing any coloring at all in the gums or, or any customization. I find that the more customization I try to do to these, the longer it takes me to do when um, the biggest goal here is to do these pretty quickly, honestly. I don't really, if I, the, if I spend, you know, two or three hours customizing these things, well, at that point, I might as well send it to a lab, in my opinion. So I'm really trying to keep these things efficient and quick, um, just to make them so that I like doing them, actually. Okay, uh, question. Denture fin is selected if you print the teeth and base separately. And denture base is selected if you're printing monolithic. Um, correct. Okay. So what you would do with denture base is you, would, if you're doing a monolithic denture, you would select denture base, and then select all of the teeth, um, both adjusted and unadjusted ones that you need to have in the denture. And what I always do is I'll actually always um, have in all my screen because whatever is on my blue sky plan screen is what I can export, that's the automatic export for me. And I find that to be the easiest way of doing it. Right, the denture fin buffers the teeth slightly so that you're able to insert the physical teeth. Uh, so that's uh, one, of the main, one of the main differences. 
Yeah, you can uh, by, uh, on, underneath the, uh, on the denture panel, you have the teeth offset of 0 0.2, I'm guessing that's millimeters. And that's about how much space you kind of need to, to stick the tooth in there. And you don't really need the denture to be too thick per se in these areas. So 0 0.2, again, with min minimum denture, 0 .2 works pretty well in my hands. I've had a couple cases fracture, but it's been uh, more on occlusion than me. I mean, sorry, more an occlusion problem than actual fabrication problem. So we get our teeth back here. And let's see the different uh, bases that were created. So in this case right here, I won't be able to export these teeth because they're proprietary Nobilian teeth. Although it was nice in the earlier version when I could do that. I also see this little spot right back here. I'm not even gonna touch it. That'll be something that's easy for me to clean up by hand later on. So let's hide it. Let's bring everything into view and then take it all away from view. And let's look at the difference between the fin and the um, token. So here's the fin right here. You can see where each of the teeth is going to fit into its individual socket. The coping shows you where I'm going to be adjusting the teeth at. So I can say I'm going to adjust pretty good, a little bit on the anteriors here, but also on that number 14, where I had to really set that thing close because uh, the occlusion was just so off in that area. Um, and so this will print out, I can just grind off anything that's above the integrity of the surface right here. And I'll typically, as I said earlier, be a little more aggressive with it than unaggressive. Um, and so let's, first of all- so you, mm -hmm. Just to clarify, you insert the teeth into the coping and then use a burr to trim the, t the tooth? Correct, so I'll do something like this right here, where, so this is an example here of teeth put into a coping that I modified, and I'll grind back all of that area that shows through, and plus a little bit more, and the two will have an, the denture tooth will have enough to grab onto in the other areas of the um, denture fin itself, and then from there I'll bond that in these ground down teeth, these reduced teeth, into the um, fins. Okay. So. Let's sit. Let's print this out two different separate files here. Export data. Now you can see here, I don't have the option of exporting those teeth, unfortunately. So I'd love to export them, but I can't. So export the coping. I'll get charged with um, exports, that's okay. So let's do coping. Now I'll get charged the second time around. And now when I go to print these little buggers out, I can just drag them into my Rayware software. And typically, I start to print these vertically. As it seems to be the best job. And also waste the least amount of resin. And from there, and also if I wanted to save a little bit of resin on these things, I might take my, um, take the coping in the mesh mixer and just cut out the powder to it. But if you don't want to, you don't need to. It would save you some uh, some money though in resin. Or you could also print this out of a cheaper resin as well, like the um, like one of the uh, surgical guide resins, or one of the, even the um, printed model resins as well. Um, and that's everything, honestly. I, I, one more thing I want to show you here. That's how I print out the teeth. Because I think that's something that that got me nailed the beginning in the beginning time pretty badly. So. This is from the first case we did with uh, Ms. Lil uh, Lily Nguyen's case, where we get printed teeth out that look like this. Now, oftentimes we're kind of tempted to print them out this way right here because it'll be really easy to set. The problem is though, if we, send them out, if we print them out this way, is that we're literally messing with the occlusal of the teeth 
and you have to go in there and literally grind off all this occlusal area, and it just makes the teams not look things not look as pretty. But we like it just because it makes it easy to set. The way I like to do it now is I'll generally print them like this. Because even though it does waste some more resin, this is just a much easier way of printing it out and setting the teeth and not ruining the occlusal surface. Um, so that was pretty much the last point I wanted to make, something that gave me some difficulty when I was first making these. Um, Michael, what other questions do they have for me? Okay. Um, is there an articulator for lateral protrusive movements? There is not. Um, so one of the nicest things about these digital dentures is I don't take face posts for my dentures. Um, I know that sounds like heresy to some, but that's just kind of how I do it with my lab tech. And I found that we get pretty darn good results most of the time. So you could do that. But if I, it seems like a lot of these denture teeth set up, especially with the nobilians, they're set up anatomically so that they should take into account um, excursive moment, movements as well. We do have the buckle bite registration functionality that allows the lower jaw to be open and closed. It also allows a bite in several different positions and then it will show the lower jaw moving from position to position. So while we don't have a full articulator visualization in the software, the functionality could be achieved by using the buckle bite registration functionality and uh, using that to move the lower model. And this is kind of where I'd go back to saying, I'd say trust your bite, trust your bite rim. And a well-made bite rim will usually give you the right answer is what I find. Okay, can we switch between modules between the denture and crown and bridge to modify the occlusal anatomy for better intercuspation in case of opposing natural denti dentition? You certainly could. Um, so I just switched over from denture module to crown and bridge module. Um, and let's go, let's actually pull up the case again. Let me go back to my denture module. I'll show you real quick here. Let me delete all my teeth and delete my bases. So let's say I wanted to go back to the virtual teeth here. Let's choose the Mitros Pontic Library, select all teeth. Teeth real quick here. I can hide them actually. Good. And so here, let's just set them in some sort of something that's close enough for right now. And I can see where a person, let's say, would want to adjust some of these left bicuspids here. I'm sorry, right bicuspids here. So you can easily go into the module for change from denture module to crown bridge module. And let's see here. Main of channels, keep editing. You can manipulate model and, and scroll over my second bicuspid here. Add remove material, hold down control, and I can delete out what I want to delete out. Or if I hold down shift, I can add what I want to add. And you can just play with all the ones to your heart's desire. And that's really why I like the virtual teeth setups a little bit more than the, than the actual um, physical teeth setups, because I can do stuff like this pretty easily. So I can add and take away as much as I want to and really customize the teeth more. Um, and I hope that answers that question. Um, yeah, for sure. The modules, the Model editing module, surgical guide module, crown and bridge module, and denture module were all, were all designed to allow movement from one to the other. So you could use one module, switch to the other, and come back you know, for more advanced users who are you know, doing maybe a more out of the box or creative uh, treatment, then all of those are possibilities. Exactly. Um, um, okay. What do you use to bond the teeth into the denture base? 
I just use more of the next indenture base material itself uh, to bond it in. So I'll take some, I'll, after I've um, cleaned off my base material, and let me go back to my presentation a little bit. Let's see, where's my presentation of base? Here we go. So right here, this will be everything that's cleaned off already. And I will simply just dab in some more next in uh, denture base material into there. And that will pretty much, and then I just light cure it. I'll usually take my other light to it, just give it a quick cure so it doesn't move on me. And then throw it in my curing box for usually 15 to 30 minutes or so, however long the material requires. Okay, we are, uh, to respond to some questions coming in, we are adding in a whole bunch of additional teeth sets. So that will be included in the next uh, software release. We have a wider variety of virtual teeth, different types of setups, uh, angulation, et cetera, et cetera. Um, question, can you use moon rape for temps? Yes. Um, I've tried temporary, like, I guess you're talking about temporary crown and bridge. I've tried it before with it. Um, I can't, uh, I use the, well, last time I, right now for my temporaries, I'll more likely use my next in 5100 because it does make a cleaner print uh, for temporaries. Um, and I had a case like that I posted on Blue Sky Plan uh, for, my, for my professional page a few months back. They turned out pretty nice um, in, in next in 5100. The moon ray would probably require some more polishing to it. And I would think the hardest part would just be getting the really fine tuning um, for it, um, but I'm sure you could. Okay, have you done a case from an STL generated from an impression scanned with a CBCT? I have not, uh, mostly because I have a shiny 3D and I've never had a need to uh, use my CBCT to take a impression, uh, to take a scan of an impression. Okay, you could, uh, to, end, to add on to the question, you could invert an impression in the software. So if you do have an impression, you can invert it in the software. Not only that, if you have a CT scan of an impression, you could convert it to an STL and invert it. Um, all that could be done in the model editing module and you could actually export it uh, at no cost. All of the functionality in the model editing module could be, could be done and exported at no cost. Um, um, there are questions if they're able, if you, truth is, this presentation is being recorded. So if you want to view the PowerPoints, then you can see the, the recording. In addition to that, on our Blue Sky Plan website, we're going to have not only the recording, but we're going to have the actual data sets that were presented in this webinar. So you could follow along uh, step by step and use the same data sets and try it out on your own. Uh, regarding costs, so there is charged for each denture. So the cost from the software side is one export to the export fees range between $11 and $20 or $21. The larger package you buy, of exports, the cheaper the per export export uh, costs are. Can you speak, uh, Russell, regarding the cost? I mean, obviously, the, there's the time involved. There's the export fee. What other costs are there in terms of creating a denture? So, um, the way I look at it is this: is that there's it costs about a good rule of thumb in my hands, just from when I did the math on it one time, is it's about one dollar per milliliter of resin used. Um, max layer dentures use about 55 to 60 milliliters. Um, sorry, not, not $1, I apologize, 50 cents per milliliter used. Um, maxillary dentures use about 50 milliliters of resin, whereas mandibular dentures use about 25 to 20 um, milliliters of resin. And so that's kind of the biggest cost. You know, if you get into the nitty gritty, a bottle of, a one liter bottle of Crown and Bridge MFH costs $467. Uh, the denture base material costs somewhere between $300 or $400. I forgot the number off the top of my head. Um, you also have to include waste in there as well. And also, um, in a billion teeth, I forgot what they cost off the top of my head. They're not expensive. Maybe they're maybe just $10 for a whole arch at most. Um, 
But yeah, it's, so that's my cost, I guess, is I estimate somewhere between uh, 20 to $50 per denture, honestly. And that includes the export fee as well. Okay, great. Um, so that takes care of the questions uh, that came in. Uh, just to touch on a couple, Oh, here, one, this is an important question, actually. How permanent should these be considered? How long should the patient reasonably expect these to last? What has the FDA cleared uh, these materials for as for long term? You know, I don't know, actually. I wish I had a better answer than that. Um, I've had some of these that have been in the mouth for, especially the monolithic ones, that have been in the mouth since um, it was first started back in, May of 2017. Um, the biggest problem with the monolithic ones that I have is that they get pretty dirty and they, they don't really get dirty from smoke, but they get dirty from coffee or like um, tea. And to clean them off, I just tell patients to actually use baking soda, works really well on them. But I've had a fair number of these that have lasted pretty well so far. Um, the ones that break are the ones where I made a mistake with processing them or where the patient just is a really heavy grinder and they tend to break everything. Um, so like that last case I showed, that patient actually ended up breaking uh, one of the dentures, one denture I made for him. And that was a um, denture with a, uh, um, a denture with printed base and um, PMA teeth or denture teeth. And I switched over to a denture um, base with um, printed teeth. And I think that it seems like it bonds better, so I, it didn't break them. He did not break them, or he has not broken them. Um, and it's been about six months or so. So I think that, I think the other reason is that you get a better bond with the printed teeth to the base, as well as the fact that you get a lot better, a lot more control with the occlusion with it as well. Okay, and what about the trying appointments? Um, so when I first started doing these, um, and if there's ever a question, I'll always do a try-in, where what I'll do is I will just print it out monolithically in a cheaper resin. I don't use the Crown & Merge MFH because that's the most expensive one. But I'll print it on a cheaper resin, and we'll try it out from there. And then, you know, stick it in the mouth, see how it looks. And then, um, you know, from that point, we say, we, I say, yep, this looks good, or nope, this doesn't look good. And if it doesn't look good, usually the bite is, bite is correct, at least in my hands. And um, we just make the adjustments as needed on the software or in the file. Okay, I think that pretty much wraps up uh, the questions and the webinar for today. The upcoming list is on blueskyplan.com forward slash webinars 2020. We look forward to seeing everybody at additional webinar sessions. Uh, stay safe, stay healthy, stay home. And uh, Dr. Schaefer, thank you so much for your participation in the Facebook group and posting all the cases and the education that you post there. Anybody that's not part of the Blue Sky Bio Facebook group, you should join right away. There are clinicians that are very, um, very giving with their time, including Dr. Schaefer. They respond to cases, they educate. Uh, there's discussions regarding different cases and techniques and 3D printing and digital software. So it's definitely worthwhile joining the Facebook group if you, if you haven't joined. So Dr. Schaefer, thank you for educating via the Facebook group. Thank you for educating via the webinar presentation. And uh, thank you for your time and thanks to everybody for attending. Thank you so much, Michael, for help, Mr. Salton for helping out with this. I appreciate it. Okay. Take care. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye.